How's it going, everyone? My name is Logan Kilpatrick. I'm the developer community advocate for the Julia programming language. In this video, we're going to be talking about how to become an effective Julia advocate. And I think I'll, I'll make the initial disclaimer that um, I do not claim to be an, an expert at advocating for Julia. I've watched a ton of great talks um, by people throughout the ecosystem who I, who I really look up to and think do an incredible job and much better than I do. Um, but I really wanted to sort of take the experience that I've had over the last couple of years, which has been, you know, speaking at a ton of different places about Julia and, and sort of try to wrap up into one single talk. Um, a bunch of things that I've learned and, and hopefully some advice for folks who are also enthusiastic about uh, sort of sharing the word about Julia with the entire world. And um, hopefully you'll come away with, with at least a couple of tips and, and tricks uh, that have really helped me over the years. So one of the one of the things that I'd love to to kick off with is is this perception that there's this marketing engine behind Julia um, as an as an ecosystem and as a programming language. And I would love to to sort of initially dispel this rumor. Um, but I think you know this perception in the Julia uh, sort of externally. Um, of the Julia ecosystem is that there's this heavy emphasis on marketing. And I think um, just to, to read this quote off of the off of the slide here, it's um, I don't see the Julia language being any better than X, Y, or Z. I'm just blurring out the name of the technology in this case. Um, but I do know where Julia people are very good um, and it's at marketing. Um, and I think that's that's sort of this external perception of, of the Julia ecosystem, which I, I don't think is is super charitable or, or true in any way. Um, I think really the reality, which is actually in the same thread, someone else responded and said, um, I think all the things you mentioned, like good marketing teachers advocating for X, Y, and Z, um, come through having a strong community, which which the Julia community seems to have been very successful in creating. Um, so I, I really love this um, sort of example, which is that, sort of highlights that by default, the way to get people to advocate for something is for them to really enjoy using it and for them to sort of um, be really excited about it, which I think is the, is the natural um, sort of segue for me to say, you know, if you're not super excited about doing Julia stuff, maybe being an advocate for, for Julia as a language or anything in life, um, you know, isn't the right idea. Um, perhaps it's, you know, I, I would say that if um, for me personally, I've benefited from both technically and from a community perspective um, by being involved in the Julia ecosystem, which is why I'm so excited about, um, about advocating. So if, if you're yet to get to that point where you have some, um, some sort of thing that pushes you to be really excited about talking about Julia, keep doing your thing, keep trying to find whatever that is, um, and you can, always, uh, you can always advocate later in the future once, you're, uh, once you find that thing that gets you really excited. The next piece of this is, is really about finding the right venues. And I think this, this comes down to perhaps what you're most comfortable with. I think for me personally, just you know, given my experience and, and my own personal background, I, I tend to do a lot of more student focused um, sort of outreach. You know, I, I don't have a, you know, I'm not a scientist by training. I don't have a PhD. So speaking to audiences like that is a little bit more challenging for me just because, again, I don't have that experience and it's harder for me to, to be in that position. Um, again, from a student perspective, that's that's sort of my sweet spot um, because, you know, I, I was in that environment and I'm closer to that environment than um, than, than other than other folks, perhaps in, in some situations. So that's that's the next piece of this, which is finding the right venues. What are the right venues for the specific audience of folks that you're interested in and in sort of connecting with? Um, these days, a lot of the sort of technical conversations are on Twitter and YouTube and other platforms like that. Um, so that tends to be a lot of the, the sort of focus. But again, if you're targeting, you know, I, I think, you know, material scientists uh, should really be benefiting from Julia. Um, you know, it's, it's spend some time thinking about where are the right venues for me to actually get a hold of that specific audience. Like, is it Twitter? Is it YouTube? Maybe it's not. Maybe it's some, uh, you know, sort of domain specific conference in that in that area. That's really going to be the, the most successful place for you to go in and, and advocate for Julia. So keep that in the back of your mind as you're sort of exploring different options and uh, where you can present this this information. Another huge piece of this is actually to just even take a step back and think about, well, what's the actual goal of this work that I'm doing? And I think for me personally, this is something that I'm always trying to sort of, you know, walk the fine line of, you know, am I really trying to persuade people to, to use Julia? Probably not. I'm, I'm more interested in sort of informing them about, um, you know, what are the different value that, uh, what are the different pieces of value that they can get if they use Julia and get involved in the ecosystem? And hopefully that's sort of persuasive enough for them by itself to just get involved in the ecosystem. But 
again, perhaps you have some specific agenda where you know you you really need someone to get involved in the ecosystem. So think more again um, about how to be tactical about what is the goal of the work that you're doing. Another thing that's been super successful sort of for me in, in having a lot of these conversations and giving all these talks is, is to lead with some of the problems that Julia actually solves. And thinking about this and, and sort of leading with some of these challenges that these developers or engineers or scientists might actually have, for me, has been really successful. And I think this is just broadly what, what, what other folks do as well. Um, but, uh, you know, for me, it's, it's talking about the two language problem, what that is, how that's relevant to them as an engineer. Um, it's talking about Again, for me, the package manager, which I think solves a, a huge headache for folks um, coming from other ecosystems who don't have a robust package manager that has first class support at the ecosystem. Um, and, and then again, this is another point that comes up in conversations in the Julia ecosystem all the time, but sort of the, the blurred lines between being a uh, developer and a user. Another piece of this, again, is uh, talking about sort of making things concrete with real world use cases. And I, I love to break up uh, real companies that are solving real problems and or projects that are solving real problems in the case of the cleaner project, which is an actual company. It's part of Caltech and MIT and a few other organizations. Um, but again, this this is really just a, a great way to sort of solidify in people's minds that this is real stuff that's happening. And these are real problems that are being that are being solved. And I should probably get involved with this because these are really important big problems that are being solved in the case of Puma's AI with healthcare stuff, in the case of Klima with, um, you know, the entire uh, earth and, and climate science and stuff like that. So lots of really exciting problems that are being solved with Julia, which is generally a takeaway that um, I think folks tend to have in, in presentations, at least that I give. This is something that I, I really thought um, that I saw in an example of, I, I forgot, I think it was Christopher and um, a few other folks who were giving a talk at a German AI conference. And they did a really good job of sort of providing the minimum viable code snippets, which I really appreciated. I, I hate when I see presentations and it's um, sort of an entire page and it's just a bunch of code that's there. And it's really hard to dissect, especially if you're just seeing Julia code for the first time. Um, so I think leading with this principle of the minimum viable code snippet, just enough to sort of pique someone's interest, but not enough where it's sort of overwhelming them, I think is a, is a really great principle to have. One of the last things to talk about is this idea of leaving breadcrumbs. And I think this is really helpful to sort of just let folks naturally trickle back into the ecosystem. So whether it's, you know, reaching out to folks after the fact and saying, hey, if you have questions, um, you know, reach out to me. If it's saying that they should go check out the hashtag Julia Lang on Twitter to like see what real users and people are talking about with respect to the language, all these things, just basically giving folks the different entry points into the community, I think is a really important part of any sort of advocacy that you're doing. Um, and it's something that I always try to do as, as I'm giving these presentations. Again, this is the last piece, which is sort of keeping things positive in general is, is going to be to your advantage. I think if you if you talk about other languages and ecosystems in a negative way, nobody really wins. You're not going to convince somebody that they should use Julia or any other ecosystem or tool by saying, hey, the thing that you're using sucks and you shouldn't be using it. Like that's just not an effective way of, of communicating with other people. So um, keep that in mind as you think about that. The last piece which I really enjoy doing is, is trying to leverage praise from other people who are sort of prominent in ecosystems um, to sort of piggyback off of their um, off of their brands and basically off of their, their kind words for the Julia ecosystem. And I think here's two examples of this. One is Jeremy Howard, the creator of uh, Fast Data AI, who's actually a keynote speaker this year at JuliaCon. The other is Toby, uh, and Toby's the CEO of, of Shopify and, and the founder as well. So just using these sort of things to, to highlight to other folks that, yes, Julia is real. Yes, people who know what they're talking about think the ecosystem is going to be successful, um, I think can be a really effective way of, of doing this. And um, again, hopefully this, this is helpful. If not, I apologize, but hopefully it was. And, and just a couple of, of tips and suggestions for you in, in your own sort of um, advocating for Julia journey. And again, um, welcome to the, to the Julia marketing department. I'll see you at JuliaCon.